Welcome back to the Blocker Podcast. I'm Moose Lundstrom. And I'm Jenner Russ. Jenny Jen- Neb. Jenner Russ. Hey, uh, so we're on the countdown. Jen is moving to Minnesota. I'm going to freeze my balls off. I got about three <laughs> weeks left for the warmth. We got a good friend of yours today and then two more good friends and then you're going to be done for a while. That's right. I'm going to be done. I'm hoping to get my son on to shock me with some stuff. Yeah. But if that doesn't happen before I leave, we'll catch it later in the year when I come back for a visit. Uh, just bring him down, man. We'll, uh, you know. What, are you going to do the co-host for him? I would love to. Okay, all right. I would love to, all yeah, right. and try to have my own kid bullshit me because he's been lying to me his whole life, right? My mom was episode number 10 on here, and I, I didn't do the episode. I had Michelle Staley come in, and her and Adam did the episode. Gotcha. And you know what? I'd have got the goddamn thing wrong. Really? She could have beat me, yeah. No, I, I asked him. I said, you want to come in and try to bullhook your mom with some of your wild shit? Because I know he's just as wild as I was at that age, right. and I know he's got some secrets. And I said, you can tell him I'm a cool mom. Yeah, that's what they all say if they kick your ass. Right. But anyway, we have a special guest, a good friend of yours. Yes, good friend of mine. He, welcome to the show, Brenton Metzler, everybody. What's up, Brenton? Hey, thank you for having me. Absolutely, man. We were meeting for the first time today, I think. Yes, sir. I, maybe, I don't know, I used to be quite the drinker. So I meet people, people for the first time three or four times, Brenton, you know what I mean? I understand so. completely. <laughs> and I'm going to tell you, I love the Bronco hat. You... Uh, you clarified it was not a Wyoming, but a Bronco hat. But yeah, I'm a huge Bronco fan. So Awesome. The original Bronco logo yeah. from, what, 63, 62? Oh, uh, 65 or something, yeah. yeah. And they went to the, uh, my, and my, the 70s and 80s are my favorite Bronco uniform of all time. So okay. like the old throwback helmet. So super cheesy. They're going back to that. Yeah. But that's here nor there. What are we talking about <laughs> that? So, Brenton, what do you do for a living? Uh, I, I'm a reality TV producer. I've been doing that since I was about 19 or 20. Right. Um, and then... Uh, I, uh, I've recently come home, take care of my parents, and be closer to home, and, and uh, I'm, I'm selling cars over at McDonald Toyota Fort Morgan for a little while before going back to, to producing. Nice. Yeah. What's up, McDonald Toyota and all the Yahoos over there? And I don't know if you guys know, but if you go down there and buy a Toyota or any car from Brenton, not only do you get a free car wash, but you get another Toyota. A Toyota. A little toy. A little toy oh, nice. mini Yoda. Buy a Toyota, yes. get a Toyota. And I think it's yeah. awesome. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, my next vehicle will be a Toyota. So From me, I got it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Lay, laying it down already. I bought a Corolla, yeah. man. That thing's been the best running vehicle of my life, man. They are Great dependable. Cars. Yeah. It's got yeah. low profile tires. Those things can kiss my ass, but uh, other than that, the rest of the car is amazing. So, yeah. Well, Brent, I, I, I want to thank you for coming on, man. This is awesome. Uh, someone of your uh, stature is going to be fun to have on the podcast. They're a reality. TV producer. That's yeah. quite quite a a, a a job. Your first Emmy winner, I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. There. Oh, you. So you've won an Emmy. I won an Emmy for a show called Elbow Room on HGTV in in 2014. And what was Elbow Room? Creating was, space in small. It, yeah, it was in Atlanta, and so you know, kind of like a lot of the Midwestern. Uh, it was about how many rooms you could make bedrooms and things like yeah. that when you build houses in a certain era. And so what we would do is figure out how to give uh, a kitchen elbow room that was built small. Fascinating. Wow. And, and tell us some other shows that you've worked uh, with over the years. Extreme Makeover Home Edition, uh, Billy the Exterminator, Tiny House Nation was my show for almost all the episodes. Oh, I love t- the Tiny House. Yeah, I just did a show that's on Hulu called uh, Big's RV Remix, which was Big Boy from Outcast. Uh, doing okay, yeah. Him and his team doing uh, um, makeovers on RVs and trailers. I got to ask. Wow, how fun. How's a kid from Fort Morgan get to get to, on that path? Uh, well, I became a reality TV producer before that was a thing. Like, when I first, my, my first show where I was an assistant to an executive producer, um, it was on NBC. It was called Meet My Folks. And it, when it was on, there was Survivor, Bachelor, Cops, and then it kind of teetered out. And right. so we were one of the first to kind of take over. And what it, what it started on is that summer. When you know when when no shows are airing, they're all airing reruns. Mm-hmm. Um, Meet my folks did really well in the summer, and, um, and yeah. it kind of helped start that that huge jump towards reality. And is this where a set of couples goes and meets the parents? Meet my folks was where a girl brings home three guys that she's dating, and oh they get to put them through uh, a series of obstacles until they pick one, including a lie detector test. The parents pick the guy. The parents pick the guy. Yeah. Holy shit! Oh, I would. Or they got a- to put them on a lie detector I would absolutely again. not approve of that, mom and dad. No. <laughs> Which one of you wants my poor daughter? <laughs> my God. That would have been a better time. I'm going to dower yeah. you offering up to take this bitch <laughs> off our hands. Honest to God, man. So do you, 
<laughs> you come up with the ideas on how does the producer um, work? What, what that's exactly? what we're that's what we're doing now. Uh, me and my two partners do. Uh, we have a production company, and uh, we're coming up with our own shows and selling. I just actually was on a pitch with the Rocks Production Company about a show we're we're pitching that I can't talk about. But fair enough. You know, so we're yeah. It's, I still am doing that for me, which is why I know I'm not selling cars forever. Um, I hope I get to do it as much as possible and, and uh, you know in between shows and things like that eventually but right now it's just it, it's uh it's oh i hope fun. it comes true i hope the pitch follows through well, if, if i, I the leave pitch four gets Morgan. landed how, how if, do you if, take if i this? leave for morgan it's going to be for something so good that everybody will understand yeah, it's, yeah, not, yeah, gonna, it's yeah. not going to be for something small you're like one day i'm just gone <laughs> so brenton i gotta ask it's a new world now can you do that from Fort Morgan, Colorado at all? Or uh, no? I mean, Zoom took over the world. Yeah. It was already eking towards that, and the pandemic shoved it into, yeah. Like, I just, yeah. Both my partners live in L.A., but we were all on Zoom. Nobody was at a meeting. Right. So I think it hampers you sometimes. Like, I'm sure there are meetings I would love to have in person, but with Zoom, I, I've been able to get away with it for a year and a half, two years yeah, now. Yeah, crazy. Uh, do you remember the first reality TV show? I, I You know, I, I got to go all the way back, and I got to either think it was American Idol or Survivor. You got American right. No, I think it was the real world, wasn't it? No, you got American right. The, if you wanna, if most you wanted. Be, if you want, no, it's, it was, if you want to be minute about it, it was on PBS. It was called American Family, and it followed an American family for six months with cameras. Uh, nobody really watched it. That we, you know, it's not like known and people remember it, but right. it was what they take it back to. That was the first time somebody said, "What if we just follow a family for real?" Probably damn. And it took off. I mean, reality yeah. TV is cops, a cops, huge thing now. Yeah, cops really. It got such good ratings and was so inexpensive to make that that's what really started the trend of reality. Right. Reality is usually about half the price of scripted. Right. Fascinating. Right. And right. it's funny that Cops is the one that made it all jumpstart. Right. Exactly. Because who doesn't want to see people getting busted by the law? It's but, uh, not me. Part Mexican, so I see a lot of family members on Cops. You know what I mean? So that's how that works. But. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get a little more into this a little later, Brenton, but uh, you ready to tell some stories? Absolutely. Give but, me. Give me. Before we do that, though, I do want to say, I forgot to do the pitch. Um, Welcome to the Blocker Podcast. If you're new here, what we do is we bring on a guest. Hey, it's Brenton, Brenton Metzler. I'm, I'm, it's not, oh good. I'm a little rusty at this. It's been a couple of weeks. <laughs> what is going to happen is Brenton's going to tell us three stories about his life. Now, here's the kicker. Only two of these stories are true. One's either borrowed, made up, or partly made up. An embellished story. At the end of the podcast, Jen and Neb and I, generous, <laughs> try and figure out which one is not the true story. So, Brenton, you're ready to tell us some stories. Absolutely. Jennifer, you want to read those bad boys off? I sure do. So, we have got... Fatal Attraction, we've got Naked Hotel, and we have Secret Bronco Fan. All right, all right. I cannot wait. I'm into it. Well, Jen, it's been a while, so why don't you go and pick one out? Okay, well, I don't want to go against your favorite. I already know which one you want to hear last. I'm going to go with Naked Hotel. I'm all about it. Naked Hotel. So, uh, I don't even know ages. I don't know how old I was, but I was producing a limitate. You remember a limitate? It was I do remember one limited. guy and four girls, one girl and four guys, and yeah. they eliminate one throughout a half hour. It was a syndicated sh- dating show. Right. And so I produced an episode of Eliminate, and uh, I, mean, I had a, a, a bowl of pudding dumped on my head that night, and I got really, <laughs> really, really hammered. And I came back to our hotel. And it was one of those things where you lay down and the room starts spinning and you go throw up in the toilet and you come back to your bed and you're naked just laying there, miserable, and the room starts spinning. You go up and you go and you throw up in your toilet and you go back to bed and the room starts spinning and you go and you go to the... And so I went into the bathroom and I noticed the door shut behind me, which was odd. And I look up... You're alone. I'm alone. So I look up and I'm not in the bathroom. I'm in the hallway, <laughs> naked. And it's your hotel room and door. And it's my hotel room door that shut behind me. Oh, no. So now I'm like, what do you do? I grab my junk. I don't know what to do. There's nobody there. I go pound. It's late at night. I go pound on the door next to me. And I, you can hear this guy. Be like, <laughs> and then he comes and you can hear that he's at the door. And I go, I need help. And he goes, get the fuck away from my door because I'm just a naked dude yeah, in the hallway. Man. Yeah, man. And so I go, I'm, no, I'm, I'm locked out of my hotel room. Will you please call security? And of course, he immediately was like, yeah, sure, I'll call security. That's not a problem at all. So the security guy comes up and he comes walking towards me. I'm just standing there naked, holding both hands over my penis. Drunk. You're drunk. I'm, I, well, the drunk has worn off quite a bit at this okay. point. Okay. But okay. yes, I was drunk and throwing up. Right, right. Now I'm very fucking sober. <laughs> <laughs> and so he walks towards me. The door shut. And I swear to God, I go, I'm locked out of my hotel room, and he goes, do you have some ID? 
Yes. And I go, yeah, in there. And yeah, he goes, yeah. okay. So he opens the door. I have to go get my ID. I show it to him, and I get back into my hotel room. <laughs> that is too funny. I love when they ask for ID when you're completely nude. But you're yeah, like, yes. Ask. Let but me the, just pull yeah. something. Perhaps my fart smell is very specific yeah, to me. Yeah, yeah. If I do, you don't want it, you know. <laughs> look, at, look, look at these eyes, but they lie to you. Hey, 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 up here. Look at the yeah. eyes, but these yeah, lie to you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I couldn't imagine and, hearing that click. Well, that you also like the most sobering click in the universe. I remember the bathroom door shutting last time. <laughs> this is a big fucking bathroom. <laughs> you know? So long. And yeah. Oh, my God, yeah. Breezy, very breezy. Uh, like this. Yeah, this fancy place. Oh, my goodness. Okay, well... And, and that's it. That's your story. That's the first story. I can totally encompass this happening. Uh, we once did a stay at a hard rock hotel, and there was a weird guitar doorbell on the outside of the door. So I, I come home one night drunk, and this is the one in Miami where the, the casino is built like the mm -hmm. guitar. I come home one night drunk, and I see that, and I'm like, well, five minutes later, this guy shows up with chocolate at the hotel room door in the shape of a guitar. And I said, what's this for? And he goes, every time you press that button, you're going to get a chocolate. Hmm. So what do I proceed to do with the next two hours of my drunk night? Ding dong. Oh, as long you. as you weren't naked. Ding yeah. dong. Yeah. I was not naked. But I can totally envision um, falling into a different room and not realizing I was in the same room. But the click would have made me go, Instantly, you have to cover both. I guarantee. Right. I guarantee the people in that hotel hate that goddamn rule, that chocolate rule. I guarantee they hate oh. it. It's the worst. I, oh my yeah, God. I can only imagine how much they hate it. I told them they should have just left me a box, but they didn't listen. Yeah, yeah. No, yeah. I'd I'd, uh, I'd do something to you. That's what happened there. I would. <gasps> would you poop on my chocolate? I would too. Yeah, I would keep it where he keeps his ID. That's where I keep it, and then I stuff oh. it off. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's what you do when, when somebody's sleeping. You just put a little chalk between their ass and just see when they realize. They're like, oh, oh, oh God. Put a little piece of Hershey's yep. in there. I do a, do a nutty one. The, 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 all, yeah, you want to make sure there's peanuts in there. One with, like, oh, my God. One, one with a whole almond. Yeah. Or some caramel and tell them, you need to get checked, homeboy. I don't know. What's <laughs> going, some, that's going to be more than one wipe. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Caramel. Uh, that's fucking horrible. Oh, that's great. What'd you think of that one? I like it. It's short and sweet, but it's a it's a very believable story. You bet I mean, it is. I mean, well, number one, when you're drunk in a hotel room, it's not your regular room. You ever woke up in a hotel room and you're just like lost for a second, like you don't know where you're at because yeah. you know you're usually you know you you know your room pretty well. So yeah, I can see that. I could believe that story. So pretty short and sweet. I liked it. Oh my gosh, that was fun. You. I totally believe. I think this is a totally believable story. Yeah, no. and I'm shocked it hasn't happened to myself. Oh, yes. Yeah, you I ever don't... found yourself naked where you didn't want to be? No, no. I keep clothes on all the time, Jen. I'm pretty. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not someone that's. Uh, I'm not attractive naked. I'm not attractive clothed. It's worse naked, Jen. I, so. I couldn't agree more. Yeah, it's yeah. worse naked. Yeah, yeah. No matter what I'm wearing, yeah. it's only Honey, if you don't like this. what I'm not. Yeah. 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 People walking by, like, quit dry heaving, bitch. It hurts my feelings. <laughs> <laughs> what's wrong? I have a look in the mirror when I get home. Yeah, what do you think? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I have a mirror. I know it's not good. <laughs> Avert your eyes. So I liked it. You? Loved it. All right. All right. Loved it. So, uh,. Before we go to the second story, I do we do have sponsors now. Okay. Uh, the Magic Bean Coffee Shop there in the... Well, you know what? I'll let them tell you. Here's a video. Check it out. Hello. My name's Megan Orcutt. I'm the owner and operator at the Magic Bean Coffee House. We're located at the block on East 8th Avenue. We're open from Wednesday to Sunday, and we are open from 6 a.m. to 3 p.m. We carry a variety of fresh, daily made pastries and donuts from Little Town Donuts and Sugar Beet Treats, made in the kitchen behind the coffee house for you. We offer all of your lattes, macchiatos, and mochas, as well as a fun monthly special. You can find us on all of our social media or at our website, themagicbean.com. All right, and that was Megan Orcutt there at the Magic Bean. Make sure you go check them out. Get your coffee there. It's a family-owned business, for God's sakes. Come on. The Have you been there? The coffee is superb. No, I, I, is it in Brush? Yeah, it's at the old stakeout. N that I'm in. <clears throat> yeah, go check them out. It's a family-owned coffee shop. It's in the uh, the block now. but So, yeah, it's not in Brush. 
In Fort Morgan. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. I, then yeah. I have been there. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, the after hour. Uh, I don't come to brush. After Just hours. Kidding. Yeah. Why would you? It's... Where's brush? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> exactly. So, anyway, uh, yeah, please check them out. And please make sure you uh, show them some love. So, and tell them the Bullhucker sent you. Well, can you get something for free? Of course not, but it uh, helps us keep horns. So. They actually charge you more. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. So, all right. That was uh, Naked Hotel. We got two great ones left Fatal Attraction and Secret Bronco Fans. So, uh, you know which one I want to pick last. Let's, I do. Let's go with Fatal Attraction next. So Fatal Attraction. So I produced a show called Extreme Makeover Home Edition. Move that bus, Ty Pennington. You know, yes, and a big thing. And we always had celebrities on. And I love this. I mean, the homes, the extreme, the makeovers were extreme. certainly extreme and always very cool. I mean, it was one of the only home, other than tiny house home-based shows I think I ever tuned into right, regularly. Right. It was very heartfelt, and we all, I, as I say, we all drank the Kool-Aid. Like, we loved that show, and we loved what we were doing so much. Um, but and we got celebrities on. And you're truly helping people, too, completely. also. So let's move away from that to my story. Sorry. <laughs> so, so uh, <laughs> uh, But no, that's what was special about it. I mean, it's the, one of the better <laughs> things I'll ever do in my life is that show. Um, that being said, we, we dealt with celebrities, and I found somewhat early on that 90% of the time when you meet a celebrity, if you can say something that shows them that you don't care that they're a celebrity, it really helps you be able to work together. Right. If you treat them with that idolatry of like, oh, my God, yeah. it becomes that always. So yeah. I try and not, but I, I'm going to work with Glenn Close. Wow. And I'm going to her house in upstate New York to shoot. And so when we get there, like the whole drive from New York to upstate New York, I'm thinking, like, what do you say? What do you say? Well, what's your opening line? And I can't, like, nothing's working. Nothing's coming up and nothing's happening. And uh, so I get there, and this is beautiful. You wouldn't think it's not like Palatial Mansion, but it's this beautiful right. house in upstate New York. And I go up and I knock on the door. Glenn fucking close answers. And you're just like, holy <laughs> shit. You know? uh, what an incredible And she goes, experience. you must be Brenton. And where this comes from, I don't know, but I say, I am Miss Close. Thank you so much for shooting with me today. I told my dad you were going to be shooting with me and that I'd have you call him as your character from Fatal Attraction. And he said not to because his nuts would shrivel up. <laughs> and that was your opening line. That's my opening. That's the salvo I fire first wow. without even meaning to. So that happens. And she goes, well, okay, then I guess we'll have to call your father. Ha, ha, ha. We shoot for five hours. God bless this woman. She shoots for five hours. We do two or three pieces that are going to go in the show. And at the end of it all, um, I, I Miss Close, thank you so much for letting us come into your home. I'll see you in a couple of days when you come to set. Right. I really appreciate it. And she goes, Brenton, let's call your father. Call your father. I love and this. I go, Miss Close, I don't, I, he doesn't even know I'm going to be here today. Like, I, we can't do that. I was, I was completely joking, and I'm sorry for the poor right. joke. And she goes, Brenton. Get your father on the phone. Oh, shit. She calls your bluff. I love it. So I pick up my phone and I dial. And old Dean Metzler isn't there. So the voicemail answers. And I go, hey, Dad, somebody wants to say hi. And I hand the phone to Glenn Close. And she goes, I will not be ignored. Do you understand me, Dean? I will not be ignored. And I grab the phone back and I go, yep. Glenn Close says hi. <laughs> Let me ask you something. Is he a big enough fan of hers where he recognizes the voice and he catches the reference? Can I tell you this much? If you were born of a certain era, and I'm sure a lot of your podcast listeners know that era, and you don't understand that line from yeah. Fatal Attraction, yeah. then you weren't a man. Right, right. right. I'm, a right. Gay, I'm a gay man, and it scared me away from cheating on women. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, uh, no, I don't. I think he knew exactly who it was. He, he played the voicemail for people for years and years That's and years awesome. and years. Well, yeah. and how fun to, to see the human, because we do idolize the famous people and we do I have a, a celebrity friend it's hard for me to not do the same until yeah. you see them idolize another star like my friend who's a star thought we saw George Strait one night and I was like what are you doing and she goes well I'm just drooling and gushing all over the place and I'm like and I do that to you yeah. you well, know also, but to also see God the human her. the yeah. human side of and of these stars, and no, she's got that fabulous sense of humanity and sense of humor in her. Sense of humor. It would have been very easy for her to just give me that look of like, uh, right? Hey, fucking excuse me. Do yeah. you have any idea who I think I am? And, yeah. you, and I would yeah. have been like, I'm so sorry. Um, yeah. And I would have spent the next three hours just cowering and being like, sorry. Right. Just, I'm sorry. <laughs> Instead, we. She was. Oh, 
freaking riot. Yeah, so. maybe she just appreciated the fact you had enough balls to do it. I think, that, know, like, I think that happens a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's well, and cool how though. appreciative as a, as a fan on your father on yeah. the other side to, to receive such a message. I mean, none Out of us. Out of the blue. Yeah, none of us get that in a lifetime. That's like a hole in one on the golf course. Yeah. You know what I mean? I, love, I forgot right before she was like, what's your father's name? I think it's Dean. I will not be ignored. Dean. I like, oh love God. this. Also, immediately, like, speaking of actresses, immediately back into character to the point where you're like, oh, shit. Yeah, <laughs> oh, God. Hide your rabbits, Please, please don't kill my buddy. Hide your rabbits, yeah. <laughs> oh, that is great. I, I like to hear stories about celebrities when they're not douchebags. Right. That's that's always my favorite. There's been a few on this podcast of celebrity encounters and... I, I have five that I don't. I'm obviously not going to tell the stories, and I'm not right. going to tell the people. But I, I've got five that I that I've met and been like, "Wow, you're a dick." Really? Or bitch? Yeah. Well, I've not had one yet, but I've only met three, so there's a whole plethora waiting for me out there. They say you should meet your heroes, though. Right? Well, and some of them too. They have that aura until you like you break it. I remember telling Usher, trying to, to, to tell him what I needed from him out of this scene for Extreme Makeover and he wouldn't listen and wouldn't listen and wouldn't listen and, and finally I just go, okay, everybody, we ready? Okay, we're going. Uh, Usher, don't fuck this up. And he goes, ha, all right, tell me what, what, tell me again what you want yeah. from me. And I was like, there we go, there. And then it was great. Then we, yeah. then we were fine, but you kind of have to break through that exterior and go, I don't care, man. And neither do you. Come on. Right. We're, all, with he- me. we're all human yeah. trying to provide we're a good thing at the end of the day. I don't know that starting with my, I told my dad and his nuts would shrivel up is probably the best <clears throat> way to break through. It ice. would have been exactly <laughs> the way I would have busted I, out a first as time. As I said, somebody. probably not the best way to break through. <laughs> <laughs> What's your dad like? Has he got a good sense of humor? Is he pretty stoic? Yeah, is he pretty, yeah. No, he, he, my sense of humor comes from him. My mom had a great sense of humor, but not like yeah. my dad. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So he was into it. He was very into it. It That's was his favorite cool. thing for a while, and he still likes to tell a story as if it's his story and not mine. Right. I love it. Can I ask you a uh, favorite celebrity you've met? Oh, wow. Favorite celebrity I've met. <clears throat> Let me go better on that. Have you ever been starstruck? Yes. During a show? Okay. No, not during a show. Um, I was starstruck by Julia Roberts because she was absolutely, I just, I don't know, there was something stunning about her. And then I was very starstruck by um, uh, Martin Sheen, but only for a second. Yeah? Yeah, I was at a table, and uh, the guy that I was sitting with, God, this is a crazy story too, but not crazy, crazy. Um, but the guy was Bob Marcucci, and Bob Marcucci discovered Fabian and Frankie Avalon in the 60s. Oh, wow. So in the wow. 60s, he was on the cover of Time magazine with the Colonel and the Beatles manager. Like, you know, it right. was huge. So there's people that know him. And so I, my back was to the restaurant because I'm a 21 year old nobody that doesn't know anybody and nobody knows. And uh, Bob goes, uh, and kind of nods his head. And I turn around, and there's Martin Sheen. And West Wing had just come out. So the uh, President of the United States might as well have been standing right in front of me. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And, uh, I, I go, oh, and he goes, hi, I'm Martin. And I go, Sheen, right? Did we go to high school together? You look really familiar. Right. So I was starstruck for a second. I was like, regain your composure. Yeah, yeah. Wow, <laughs> incredible. And I mean, he's one of the greats. I saw Goldie Hawn once in Pasadena walking down the street with Kate Hudson, and I did not approach them. Because I knew I would be the biggest, dorkiest fan geek in the world. I was right. sitting there having lunch, and I was like... Wow. Yeah. My favorite know. celebrity interaction is Carrie Fisher. Um, really? In, in Japan at a Star Wars celebration thrown by Lucas that I was covering for G4. I was working with her and I walked away f- for a little too long. And she goes, where'd my gay go? And I was like, Carrie <laughs> Fisher has referred to me as her gay life connect. <laughs> you were like, that was I probably am, my favorite. Yeah. I am so, owning yeah, that for yeah. the rest of my life. Yeah. You're like, I'm, I'm, I'm Carrie gay, Fisher's that's gay. That's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Everything's good with the world. Oh, that is superb. Yeah. That's, that's funny, man. That's probably my favorite. That, that was the best. Princess Leia needs to be a pretty cool cast, She's such a body. Like, her jokes yeah. were mean-spirited and amazing and really? funny and biting humor. And she also, there was a story of her... Um, her friend said that a producer had sexually harassed her and she took a cow tongue, wrapped it up in a Tiffany's box and sent it to him with a note that said, if I ever hear of you touching in her or anybody again, it won't be a tongue that comes to you in a box. Do we understand each other? Wow. So she was also that girl that was just like, don't with me. And yeah. I love that. I love that. Sure. You know, I bet Carrie Fisher, Glenn Close is obviously very, very achieved and very, right? But I bet Carrie Fisher is more, more recognizable than her. Well, she was the fantasy of every boy I mean, our on, age. Yeah. Like, bikini. Yeah, man. There was yeah. a guy that stood up in the audience one time and said to Carrie Fisher, w- "What do you think about the fact that my daughter has to buy that girl in a metal bikini?" And she goes, "I don't know. I guess I'd tell her that uh, I wore that metal bikini because a giant space slug kidnapped me and made me do it, and then I didn't like it, so I choked him. Yeah. And then I took it off. 
backstage. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, and you're like, out of here, I'll get him. Yeah. Um, Pe- yeah. People are hilarious, man. That is great. What an iconic moment to the metal bikini. Yeah. Oh, I mean, it's. Yeah. I'm that age. Uh, I'm, you bet. I'm, I'm, I'm that age, too, yeah. but I was a little bit more leaning towards the boys, you know? Sure. Sure. But me yeah, too. I mean, me to the slayer, man. Yeah, <laughs> the, there was no mistake in the great hair and the clothes and the beauty and the buns. So Harrison Ford guy, then probably right. Yeah. I mean, it would have been more Mark Hamill. I mean, oh, yeah. I, I didn't want to be Han. I wanted to be Luke. Okay. I, I wanted to be a Jedi with a lightsaber. Yeah, I would have rather been Luke too, myself personally. Yeah. Now, yeah. as a, I'm not taking my age, but as an older guy, yeah. Um, now it's like, oh yeah, Han's the man. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. Pretty good stuff, man. Are you a Star Wars fan? Good no? times. I'm Huge. having a ball I'm with a this. Nerd of, for everything Me too. sports. To, yeah. Yeah, I'm a nerd. On Disney Plus, what do you feel about all the stuff coming on Disney Plus for Star Wars? It's good, but my favorite thing about Disney Plus is like Darkwing Duck and, and like yeah. uh, some of those cartoons from when I was like a real kid. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like all available again. Even yeah. like Gummy Bears, which yeah, yeah. I didn't realize until I was like 25, was just made to sell us candy yeah, yeah. The gummy bears have a cartoon uh first of all i think they were a cartoon first that's not yeah, true yeah, yeah. um <laughs> i i they were yeah it was it was a cartoon where they drank gummy berry juice and could bounce around and have superpowers yeah, it was yeah. amazing you know oh, this that? sounds something that's like still a even worry uh, worthy i gotta tell you yeah do some mushrooms and watch gummy bears on Disney plus oh i was a massive gummy bear my fan. whole night is planned I can sing the whole song. Dashing and daring, courageous and caring, faithful and friendly with stories to tell. All through the forest they ring out in chorus, so marching along as their song fills the air. Gummy bears dancing here and there and everywhere. Fond adventures that beyond compare. They are the gummy bears. You guys, I am so jealous. I want to be part of this threesome, this thruple, whatever is going on. I have never heard of this cartoon. And if you're one we're tonight. talking about. I might just cut that part out because my, my pitch isn't there. Yeah. You we sounded were, great. We weren't touching pitches. Oh, That's God, what no, we were. The, I, <laughs> the only key I can hold is the one to my car. Yeah. So. I, I sound super in my car, too. Okay. I got you right there. You don't remember the old uh, songs from your cartoons when you were a kid? I remember all of them, but I've never seen this Gummy Bears one. Really? No, but I, yeah, I can pull off Fraggle Rock. I remember Fraggle Rock and the... Uh, Jim Henson. The beginning to, uh, of course, the Jetsons, you know, all of that yeah. stuff. I I love they used to all say that it. Jim Henson ran uh, the Henson studio like a explosion in a mattress factory. <laughs> really? So much energy, but yeah. there was always a safe landing. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. fun. Yeah. That's funny. So, that, I think that's the first on the podcast in 167 episodes where we start singing. singing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> if we don't get pulled off YouTube, that could happen. Right, yeah, so, yeah. 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 Do you remember you were here with, you were here with uh, Kim? Aquila. Yes. I, that got flagged on YouTube. This kid, he's a uh, teacher, but he's from the Philippines. Oh, yeah. This dude, whenever he sings karaoke, can belt it out. He's oh, like, so he sang a song? Yeah. <laughs> you might get away with the theme song to Gummy Bears. He's yeah. saying, yeah. he saying a Journey song, and it got oh, yanked well, for I trademark. Mean, but yeah, yeah it yeah. was there, or copyright, whatever. But it, what we heard in the studio, and I'm sorry that everybody had to miss it because it's stupid copyright stuff, yeah. was incredible. Right. It's amazing. Even on this system, this isn't built for singing. This is right. built for, you know. Well, and course. you guys yeah. just sounded great together. I don't know what you're oh, talking about. No. I was so excited. We're talking about going on tour. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll look like the number It's early 10. stages. Yeah. Early yeah. stages. Yeah. Like we will We're going to do a county fair circuit first. We will throw <laughs> edible right. gummy bears to your children That's all right. day long. Or, Get them to the front row. Or gummy something. Let's have some fun with it, you know. <laughs> all right. That's two down. We got Fail Attraction, Naked Hotel. We have one left. We have Secret Bronco Fan. So another extreme makeover. We went on our 200th episode. We did the Joplin, where the tornado hit. And the tornado was... Joplin, Missouri. Missouri. And okay. uh, the, it was Joplin, Missouri. The tornado hit. It, it, it was a mile wide at its base. It was going 10 miles an hour. So it just carved through Joplin. And uh, we went there and built seven homes in seven days for our 200th episode. And one of the things that happened is um, the, the high school who was supposed to have a home playoff game got to play it at Chiefs Stadium. Wow. And so while we're there, Ugh. I know, but Clark, oh, Chiefs. but Clark Hunt, who was a baller human being, I love yeah. that man, yeah. um, him and the organization gave scholarships to the entire football team um, oh, wow. for college. And he announced it there at, at 50 yard line so we had to go there and I produced with my host Paige on camera doing it and him and the president of the team announced these scholarships and so I helped him through it he wasn't really comfortable doing this kind of thing and so uh, I helped him through it and he really felt thankful 
and he knew I was a Broncos fan. Yeah. So he invited me to come to the owner's box for a Denver Bronco game. Nice. Um, which was super cool. But and is this when Pat Bowen? Pat Bowen is still alive. Still, John Elway still, still our GM oh, okay. at this point in time. It is the Tebow year. Oh, nice. Wow. And okay. this is the game where he throws eight passes for 140 yards and wins the game. Yeah. The Chiefs. I think it was but less wait, than that. Because that's coming. Yeah. So what we do is I get a note with that saying, please don't wear any Broncos gear. Not from him. I think from his secretary. Please don't wear any Broncos gear. Slacks, dress shirt, blah, 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 blah. It's the owner's box. And uh, so I take my brother. And uh, before I go in there, I put on a Broncos jersey T-shirt underneath. Very boy. Just to have it on. There you go. Sure. Just to have it. We go into the owner's box. I mean, it's spectacular. I don't know. I'm sure we've all seen pictures. Sure. You know, we've all seen video of them in their little seats out front. But yeah. also inside is, I mean, prime rib and the, the well, vodka's kettle one vodka. And, I mean, it's yeah. one of those things where you're like, holy cow, this is how – I, I've been around some rich people. I don't know this. Li- this is not a lifestyle I understand right, or know. Right, and this right. is crazy. And you're doing things like the whole time. You're like um, trying not to cheer when, you know, it's like, oh. And, and I remember going, who the hell is 25? And uh, yeah, and the president of the team going, ah, that's um, Chris Harris Jr. He's an undrafted rookie out of Kansas. And you're like, oh, did we take him from your backyard? <laughs> but you're just like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> so you know this. But TiVo... I don't know what came over me. Tebow throws an, like an 88-yard pass to Eric Decker for right. a touchdown, and we go up by two scores. And I took my shirt and I like Superman, like Superman, yeah. I ripped it open to show a Broncos jersey, and it was on Sports Center. Uh-uh. I love this. So uh, uh-huh. I guess why are they requesting? Are you just supposed to maintain some some sort of uh, you're, neutrality you're, you're if you're Chiefs, sitting in if, the owner's if box? If the owner has invited you to the Chiefs box, oh, you're, you're in right. the Chiefs box. Yeah. Never mind. I'm in the I got Chiefs this. owner's box. Don't you wear just, your Bronco. Don't wear, you don't wear the other team's clothing. Respectfully, yeah. and I didn't. I wore it underneath to just Bronco pride. It's gotcha. heat. next to my heart. Yeah. I forgot we were. Yeah. In Kansas that, that, City, not Denver. Tebow's, remember, we don't even know the magic of Tebow yet because even though there are three seasons where we've won Super Bowls, that Tebow season is one of my three top three favorite seasons. Yeah. And, and it's not because I like Tebow. Tebow was an awful quarterback, but there was something, there was something magical going on. We right. were winning games. That there's no reason for us to win, and it was right. amazing. And the game over me. It was the second game that he'd won in that string, right. and I just ripped it open. And then, of course, some camera guy's like, "Oh, look!" And so it's the Clark family. And me going, yeah, in a Broncos jersey in the owner's box, and it made Sports Center. Yeah. I love that. You know what? <laughs> Fuck them. Right. <laughs> I was like, it, it went for a moment, and, and even Clark was like, ha, 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 that's funny. And I put my shirt back, ha, ha, And then it was just like, that night you're like, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. not good. Yeah, I got tickets from Pepsi when I worked there. I'm a Bulls fan still to this day. And uh, to Jordan, go, man. Yeah, yeah, the Nuggets and Bulls, and all the Pepsi guys show up and all their Nuggets shit except me. I wear all my Bulls shit. And they're like, "What are you? What are you doing? What are you? What are you I'm sorry to watch the game, but I'm, I'm not a fan of your shit team. That's you know, but uh, yeah." Even though they're way better than us now, but speaking of the Nuggets, wow, they're you know like what? some pulling some good yeah, stuff. You got to be coming year. over a little bit, you know, Yoke, man. You got to be coming over a little bit, right? Yeah, I'm cheering for them now. Okay. I want to see the Nuggets do well. Yeah, if they play the Bulls, I'll, I'll root for the Bulls. But other than that, go Nuggets. They Nuggets, rarely yeah. do well, and this year they just seem to be I mean, doing stupendously. So Nikola Jokic is otherworldly. He's and otherworldly. Anytime I can see LeBron James throw a tantrum, he's such a piece he of shit. He throws a tantrum always. He yeah, throws a tantrum when he fucking wins. Uh, here's what I don't like about him. is I, I watched an interview with him after game three, and he blamed everybody but himself. Mm-hmm. He blamed AD. He blamed the coach. He blamed the refs. He blamed everything. I'm like, you, you're such a I mean, Did you shit. see the Lakers, uh, not, to, not to jump <laughs> off of our topic, but the Lakers, uh, just in, it's been announced that they will give him a max three-year deal and they'll draft Bronny. <laughs> Wow. His son. Well, I don't know if you're keeping up. His son. I don't. Who's not good enough to be drafted in the first two no, rounds. No. Maybe deep in the second if you're taking a flyer, but they'll draft him first to make sure they get him. He's not first just like pick, guilt first by round. association. Just to, get, just to get his son so that he'll stay there and play ball. Wow. Okay, now I'm going to come back to the subject. Yeah. So you said it, you did seven homes in seven, seven days. days. Yeah. What we had, sort of production we, company do you need well, to bring down there to complete this task? It was never a production company. The greatest thing or, about Extreme Makeover is it was a local builder who would take on this task, and they would raise uh, they would raise their own money to feed people on their staff. They would raise their own money to do things, and then we would we would get uh, that house 
was a zero line item on our budget. So it is the entire built, everything to build that house was, community. was donated or bought by the community. That's Fascinating. Amazing. Mostly donated. Is that we how a lot all of, of them worked, or is that that's how Extreme Makeover Home Edition works? No, it's a whole other thing when you get to some of the smaller shows. <coughs> okay. uh, most generally, we're putting some money into a renovation, and you're putting the rest. So we're finding somebody who's already doing one and wants to make it right. baller. Fascinating. Okay. But it works all different ways. Because I just thought, wow, if you guys are hauling in production crew, TV crew, well, it was construction still, crew, yeah. seven houses, seven days. That well, seems the budget like, was. I mean, it the budget took God was in, what seven the days was over to create the whole world. <laughs> the episodic budget was over a million, but that didn't go to all towards building. Gotcha. Okay, so, fascinating. I've heard from some of the folks at Morgan who have their stuff redone for the hometown makeover. Right. Is that was the deal? They had to pay for all the materials. But the, the the work was free, mm -hmm. so yeah, they they got it done for free. So. And they did a super job. I mean, yeah. everything they did, they, you know, it wasn't down there. Was very cool. Some of the some of the community, I don't think, loves it because because of the way it was sold. But if you're putting, let's say, they put three quarters of a million dollars into the community and what they did in, in yep. resources and things like that, you're not going to go. This town's pretty good, but we're going to make it better. You're going to go say this is a town on its last leg, and we're here to help. But that's right. how you're going to sell it. And a lot of people were upset with how Fort Morgan was portrayed, but that. That's you sell it as some place that needs yes, your help, yes, not as some place that yes. kind of needs help. Well, and, yeah. and, and so and I get it. Main Street kind of was speaking those words when I mean, really, we, if you we all be honest with down. ourselves, Fort Morgan needed a boost. And, and I see I the tourism. Yeah. I see people coming yeah. in and yeah. taking pictures, and I had, yeah, I nothing to do with it. Awesome. There's a lot of homes on there, though. I was thinking to myself, uh, it's already a nice house. Come do my piece of shit I live in. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. You want to impress people? Well, they've got to do, yeah, I don't know what their budget is for each one, but it's got to be something they can do within a budget, too. Like, they right. can't really take a, you know, that's yeah, yeah. that's part of reality TV is we do our best right. with like, what's given to us. you take my trailer and give me a million yeah. dollar home? Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Can you just knock this down and start yeah. over? And I'm sure there's yeah. people that go in, have that expectation of, of right. you guys when yeah. you go in to do that. You're like, no, that's not how this works. Right. So I, I think I'm, I've seen the show you're talking about. It's, it's like the big moving van out front, the family sits there in the Move Moving. that bus. Yeah, okay. Move okay. that bus. Yeah, big, I got, big. I mean, we had everybody from Justin Bieber to uh, Mariah Carey. I mean, we had celebrities on there. Every episode was a new celebrity. Amazing. So that's cool to see celebrities, but I mean, what's the rush you feel to see that family? So the coolest thing was, um, we're on video too, um, you would have the house, the front yard, Ty and the family, the <coughs> bus, and then me and the cameras, right? So... Or, sorry, the bus and then the family and then me and the cameras. And so when it was time to actually move the bus, me and the cameras would go around to the other side of the bus. So when the bus moved, the first thing they saw was their house. But I'm looking right at their face. Like, I'm yeah. right there in front of them as they – it's life-changing. It's yeah. And we did so much good that by the time I got there, I was there 7, 8, and 9, season 7, 8, and 9. There was so much good that it put out that you would call and go – or, like, I remember this is an exact story. I was like, ah. Oh, we have this circus room. How cool would it be if we had an elephant to like hand a chair through the room to move furniture in? And some girl in Tennessee goes, do you say an elephant? My brother has an elephant ranch about two, town, two towns over. He'll bring one over. And oh it was an gosh. animal sanctuary for elephants in the middle of Tennessee, and they brought a damn elephant over. Wow. To bring, and so it was one of those shows that just had done so much good that whatever right. you asked for just kind of happened. They were like, yeah, for you guys, sure. That's so awesome. it was amazing in that way, too. Like, you, you do other productions and go, well, why is nobody bending over backwards to make this happen right, for me? Right, right. And I think that's why reality TV has done so well. Not because it's cheap to do whatever. I think it's because it's, you're dealing with people that you can relate to. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's not celebrity. It's not the Glenn Close's and the, right. and the you know. Right. The also, it feels attainable to you yes. much more than like, everybody. I mean, everybody that goes out to Hollywood feels like they're going to be Tom Cruise or feels like that's, that's the ultimate goal. And actually, right. I mean, if you're... If you're insane enough to go out to LA to try it like I did, I, I think you believe you're going to be because there's that's a big leap for, yeah. for sure. I hope. Sure. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you believe you're going to be, and I think what reality TV gives you is that glimmer of hope of like I could be famous without really having to learn how to act, and I think that's incredibly right. appealing to people. You know, oh no skills. Fuck well, yeah. and to just be yeah. your, and to be yourself because that's what we relate to. Right. And I don't need to be trained. Right, and yeah. that whole human spirit. But my whole my whole idea is just seeing somebody else smile. Because of something you try to do to make their life a little bit better has got to give you the warmest fuzzies yeah. inside. I, I still keep in contact with, I would say, at least half the families on a regular basis from that show that I helped. That's, That's amazing. I, I, some of them are incredibly dear friends. And uh, Tiny House Nation, too. <coughs> you know, I'm a guy with a lot of empathy and a big heart, and I love people. And so they also were never, you know, they're never just people that were on camera to me. 
I, uh, I think that's awesome. And shows like that are great. But it does have a dark side, too. Reality TV has a very sure big does. dark side. I have a buddy that was on Wife Swap. Oh, was, no. Yeah, you know, it was bad for him. <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, it's funny because when he came on, did it, he, like he, when he the was swap the heel. happened? Did he, he was be like, heel. "I like this one better." Oh no, 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 nothing okay. like that. But uh, <laughs> he came off looking rough. But as he told me, we were we, we filmed for two weeks. It's an hour show. Mm-hmm. They make you look however they want to make you look. Uh, we had somewhere around 112, 116 hours of television right. for each hour long episode of Extreme Makeover right. Audition. Wow. He, he's from this. He's a good friend growing up. So me and a couple of our buddies, we sat at my house and watched it. Laughed our ass off because he looked like such a. He, they, it was yeah. so bad for him, you know. But it actually affected his job. Of course. It affected, yeah. I mean, he was a. Well, he, he worked for a company where he had to be to different stores all the time. And uh, Oh, you mean because of how they, they kicked him out because they saw the show and they're like, him. yeah. Uh, I, mean, I mean, they had a big watch party uh, in the town he lived in at the time and they hadn't seen the show yet. And so they sat there with all their friends there and watched this happen. And yeah. Well, and I think there's, there's two, I mean, there's probably 18,000 schools of thought, but there's a school of thought of like, I'm going to manipulate reality into what I want it to be. Right. My thing is my little like badge of honor I wear is the moral code of my yeah. reality TV making yeah. right is I I cannot create reality. I can manipulate it once it's given to me. Yeah. So for instance, if they're driving the tiny house in on Tiny House Nation to park it for us and the tire goes flat and I don't have cameras on it, I will flatten that tire again <laughs> to relive that moment because right. it really happened. Right. I won't go what if we pump a tire? Yeah. I'm not, because right. it, it feels, first of all, it's disingenuous. And when you ask people to do something disingenuous, they're never going to sell it like you need them to. Sure. So now you're just inventing stuff and doing a scripted show with people that aren't actors. Right. So, but when it happens, you can get them into the, listen, this just really happened to us. So let's own it. We didn't have cameras on it. It's reality TV. Let's, let's, let's have that happen because it's a real thing. Right. Sure. That's my little moral line, right? Is I, I can't create it. I can manipulate it once it happens. Right. Well, and, right. I, and I think that's okay. <laughs> I think that's great as the moral line. Now there's plenty of people making it up and shooting it. So. And in the sure. right, I was just going to say that in the genre that you shot in, um, not necessarily a whole lot of craziness. But when they go into those dating ones and the I bad, the bad girls club. I started out in dating. Yeah, well, eliminate was, I mean, was you had to have fights and you had to have kissing, and that was like your that was your golden episode. If if it had something else unique to it, and then because, you could portray as you wanted. <laughs> One of the things I loved about Eliminate is you people would go like, oh, I love that show. My favorite ones where they, uh, they're they dancing and then they end up in that hot tub. And I'm like, dude, that's like 70% of every episode I've ever did. Yeah. But I loved when people would come up and be like, the bird watcher. And it's like, yeah, it's a great episode. That yeah. woman was insane. And like, I love it when that's, you've done something, you've made a, a basic thing unique enough that like, when they go, oh, I love Tiny House Nation. Oh, the, the hang glider. And you're like, oh, yes, that they was a really good episode. They remember a thing episode. about it where you're like, oh, that's we did something right there. You remember that episode and something mm-hmm. about it that is reminiscent. That's tough to do. Yeah. You know, naming your favorite episode of anything you watched all of is tough. Sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> very cool, man. That is very cool. So what would you think? Well, I think I, I also totally plausible. I think it's great that you ripped your shirt off like Hulk style. Yeah, yeah. In the Chiefs Stadium, I was fully thinking you were inside of no, Empower. Uh, Empower. I'll still say fun. Mile High. Although back in those days, though, it's not like today. That rival rivalry has gotten way worse. Oh, I mean, it, the Raiders and Broncos is always it's like Crips and Bloods. Like, that's, that's where you know you see all the fights and yeah, everything. Else. With the Chiefs getting good, we hate them. Now. Yeah, yeah. Well, now it gets ugly. You yeah. know what I mean? Because now they've they've passed us in the Super Bowl. Well, that was just Joe before. Patrick. That was before Mahomes yeah. too. That was uh, um, Alex Smith. Alex Smith was yeah. was the quarterback at that point in time. Yeah. Right, and they were still getting better. You know. Yeah. But it was definitely they they thought they thought they were winning that game. I think that yeah. was part of it too. Is not only. Did we go ahead and then stay ahead and win? And the shirt got ripped open, but they also like legitimately think, oh, bring him to that game. We'll destroy the Broncos. Right. They're shit this season. Tebow's an awful quarterback. We'll right. and then we'll and literally before the game, they were like, We'll take you across, we'll introduce you to John. It's gonna yeah. be great. And then afterwards they were like, Thanks, thanks for coming. <laughs> yeah, you shit. You <laughs> show shit. ourselves out shit. there. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, it was not okay. Yeah, you yeah. are done so, huh? Yeah. Thanks for coming to the owner's box. And I felt call. bad because I like I wasn't trying to <laughs> Uh, I, I felt bad. Then I felt like shit when right, I saw it on Sports you're, Center. You're trying so hard to maintain the oh, oh, clip. Yeah. And then to have it end up on a nationally oh, my syndicated, God. it's one thing to do. Yeah, so it. to have him go, God, did that, <laughs> you know, t- uh, you, you, you walked away and said to his assistant, Did that dickhead really open up his shirt? And then that night he's like, Yeah, he did. 
There it is. I'm going to have Tebow pray for you guys, though. I'm going to give up to you. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I loved most about Tebow? I, I love the person. I love what he stands for. But it was funny because nobody wanted to see him be quarterback, but he kept winning. Kept he winning. kept he kept just pulling out this miracle shit. My aunt you know? still thinks he's a better quarterback than Peyton Manning, and I'm like, let's just no, all pump our fucking Let's not get crazy. Let's not get Let's all nuts, pump you know? our brakes. Stay in your lane. Easy. Uh-huh. Easy. If, you, if you slam on the brakes, you're sliding right off the road. Just, so just you pop think, them. So right. you think Peyton is the greatest of all time? Wasn't he no, flat balls? No. I mean, no, just call me Tom a girl. Brady. That's, Tom Brady. First of all, don't get the Okay, okay, yeah. Second of all, Peyton is probably the smartest person ever to play as far as just knowing the game of football he's not I don't think he's the greatest and it might be Brady yeah. but even these I don't even know if the greatest Bronco Elway was special right. yeah in a in a unique just completely athletic way not that yeah. he wasn't a smart quarterback Peyton Manning knows how many times he landed lined up across from a guy and what his feet do each time it's he's got a right. he's cerebral in a way that you'll so never you're see saying again. he's got a facility for a deeper volume of that the he physics watch, of that game if he was watching a game film on the Raider, the raiders right he would watch it five times the first for this the second for this the fourth for the third for this the fourth for this and the fifth for this right and he would watch every game from the last season so he watched 16 games Five times oh. each to prepare for a Raiders game. That's nuts. So he knew every move they were going to pretty much make, nuts. tried to make. Yeah. I mean, he had a counteract. But I'd still pick Elway. Yeah, well, because Elway was more the Braveheart. Let's charge into battle, start kicking ass type. You know? Sure. I mean, when, when Elway came in the game with two minutes left, we, we yeah. Uh, yeah. yay, we've won. You know, it's, but it's crazy when you watch Elway because you forget right. how, how hard he threw the ball. He threw it so hard that... During the drive, which is that old grainy footage, you see the ball. It comes out of his hand, and it goes like this, yeah. and then levels out. It yeah. was thrown so hard. Yeah, it yeah. actually it's, catches. You actually see it go lift. like that, and then goes. And you're wow. like, wow. So crazy. Well, they call it the Elway X because the pads would leave a little cross, right. the Elway cross. Um, it would leave a little cross when it hit you in your chest. And so he would, in practice, he'd throw it so hard into their pads that they'd get a little cross indented into their chest. My very good friend, uh, we were at the uh, game where Peyton Manning went into the, the Ring of Fame in mm-hmm. Denver. Uh, my girlfriend at the time and I were had nosebleeds. My good friend and his son were down on, like, the second row, right? Mm-hmm. He calls me. He says, why don't you guys come down here? There's two seats. No one's sitting down. Okay. So halftime, we start heading down there. He's nowhere to be found. I'm, I'm furious. Like, he's son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. So what happened was when Peyton comes out, he goes, give me a jersey. So my buddy's wearing a Peyton Manning jersey, gives him the jersey, gives it to him. Peyton Manning wears that jersey to accept the, the, the award and get the ring of fame. Signs it, gives it back to him, takes a picture with him. And everybody around him goes, I bet that jersey's worth a lot of money. They started saying, like... Auction it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So he told us, let's go, let's go get a, a drink real quick. And they left. Because he was afraid someone's going to try and take it from him. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, so yeah. Uh, he got it, yeah, he got it uh, framed. It's cool as shit, That's man. That's awesome. Somebody offered him like $30,000 And there's probably Twitter. a video of that somewhere. Yeah. Oh, he, he has all kinds of proof yeah, yeah. that, yeah. Amazing. It's, yeah. And the crazy part was he was a Peyton fan before Denver. Right. I hated Peyton Manning when he was in the Colts. Of course. I hated him. Hated him. In the minute he became ours, I was like, yeah, <clears throat> yes, yeah. Peyton Manning's the best. Yes. <laughs> you were, you well, were that's the right how colors. it goes. I mean, you're, every you're, you're there's some that you bring uniform. in Yeah. But you're right. To Even Russell Wilson, I was like, yes. Yeah. What are you gonna do? Uh, Romanowski was the hard nosed, awesome player until he put the silver and black on. Then I thought he was the most crooked son bitch ever. Kick him out of the league, right. you know? So. Spitting in that guy's face. Yeah. That one of the best shots ever. <laughs> yeah. It's so awful. I'm so against it. JJ Stokes, right? From the oh, 49ers. Yeah. Was well, because that dude's just in his. They both had uh, helmets on, right? And finally, we realized you just see this loop right into his oh my amazing. gosh and he just got caught that happens all the oh, time oh right I'm sure it happens he all the time he just got caught so that's, yeah that's I miss the old days of the mouth reading on the TV now the coaches have learned to cover their mouths with their playbooks uh, everything's bluetooth in the helmet and I yeah. miss cause you used to be able to be like oh oh he just dropped a motherfucker yeah. he just dropped a motherfucker yeah, they also yeah. used to drop each other like motherfuckers yeah. <laughs> yeah. true, who was, true. That, uh, who was that middle linebacker for the uh, the Steelers the Steel Curtain Jack uh, Jack uh, anyway I remember, starts with an L I know Lambert Lambert yeah. uh, but he had missing his two front teeth and yeah. he would just snarl and spit as he spoke yeah. but I remember him going I couldn't play today in the NFL no. I, helping your opponent up slapping him on the ass I couldn't play on this day and you're like all right, dude. All right. My favorite, my favorite Bronco of all time, Steve Atwater. He's my favorite. He couldn't play now. He'd be he'd be ejected every game because he. Dennis just, Smith and him. Dennis yeah. Smith said, "You see, they're the they're the Corvette, and we're the truck. And yeah. when a Corvette hits a truck, the yeah. guy driving the truck gets out and goes, Are you okay? Yeah, yeah. That is great. Yeah. yeah. See, and I remember Barney Chavis. 
So Barney Chavis, who played for the Broncos way back in the 70s, him and his buddies used to come and hunt on my grandparents' land. They had a pheasant quail out in Otis. Right. And I remember growing up with Barney Chavis's kids. So I, yeah. it'd be fun to contact them back out and be like, remember when we were seven and yeah. used to run the farm? But that's when you said the 77 uniform... I'll never forget when Barney brought his out to my grandpa's oh, farm awesome. and was showing cool. it to us. Very yeah, cool. yeah. All right. All right, bitches, what do you got? All right. Good times. Okay, here we go. So what we do is now we guess. Before we guess, we rock, paper, scissors to see who has to go first. Okay. How do you rock, paper, scissors? Run, two, three, go. You shoot. All You're right. a four pumper. Rock, well, paper, scissors, shoot. Yeah, but I also I do it four times for the rock, paper, scissors. <laughs> But I'm also a four pumper. I'm yeah, also, yeah. A, he's like, sometimes three I'm pumpers, a five pumper. <laughs> you know I five pumped once. <laughs> oh, my 20s. It was awesome. <laughs> All right, I guess we're going four. Are you ready? Yep. Darn it. You've been kicking my ass uh, in the rock, paper, scissors uh, lately. There's three pumpers and four pumpers. I do it. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, see. Isn't that strange? You seemed, you seemed quick. When I met you, I was like, <laughs> you that, guy, seemed... that guy definitely shoots real shame yeah, real quick. Yeah, yeah, you're going to go, you're going to die alone. Quick I can, tell you, I can the, see it right now. So. Moose is a fast finisher. That's what Brenton just said, you guys. Ah-ha. Woohoo, done first. <laughs> <laughs> I first yeah, first yeah, out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, the, I'm the winner. Yeah. Oh, now I'm number one? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you ever watch Blue Mountain State? Yeah. Okay, yeah. Sammy. All right. We got three great stories. We have... Fatal Attraction, Naked Hotel, and Secret Bronco Fan. Jen, what are you thinking? Oh, my gosh. I am, you know, I'm almost, this might be the first time I'm going to admit that I'm a bit stumped. Yeah. Um, I'm literally going to have to pull one out of my ass for this. Oh, I have that story, too. <laughs> Because of gay, right, guys? <laughs> you got to have him back yeah, yeah. for more stories. Yeah, yeah. You got to come back for more stories because that's what I want to hear. Okay, so just because I, it's almost so common and the other two are so incredibly unique, and based on that alone, I didn't feel I was bullhucked. I couldn't find any fakeness in it, but I'm going to go with Naked Hotel, because I have to pick one. All right. Uh, you know, what's funny is, here's how I know you've you done a good job, because I got some of the stories, I quit listening to what I was supposed to look for bullshit. <laughs> right, right, <laughs> you know, me too. That's, and it happens sometimes. You just get engrossed in the story, and then, you know, you're just like, oh, shit. I was enthralled. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm the same thought process as you. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, the other two had a lot of passion in them, a lot of, uh, a lot of detail, and you can tell when you took... Some people tell stories. You can tell they're proud to tell the story that something really happened, you know. Uh, I think Nokia Hotel as well, although I think that is partly true. There's only a part of it embellished. But uh, I'm going to go with Naked Hotel. So we're both going out. Hold on one second before you flip that over. Before we do that, I do want to say thank you to the Brush Emporium. They're actually the main sponsor of this podcast. Brush Emporium is 610 Clayton Street. Come on down. Uh, one of the few places I actually go to and brush the oh, pizza. Pizza's great. Yeah, pizza's you guys. Yeah. And they do bingo, and they do trivia night, and they do wings on Wednesdays, and the pickle pizza is to die for. Yeah, you're the second person I've not Oh, tried my God. The I'm pickle not, pizza. No, Stop yeah. putting pickles on things. Okay, how about the, they got a BLT <laughs> one up there, too, that is the bomb. I can deal. And it's great. And also, if you want looking for a gift, come down here, man. You can go to Amazon or online and get something. Or you can come and have something that's homemade. You yeah, know? it's so, really cool. I walked around. You guys were really late, so I walked around and looked at everything. <laughs> We're rarely on time, yeah. But if a, I come strolling in two minutes early, it's a miracle. But like Jen said, every uh, second and fourth Tuesday of the month, they are doing bingo upstairs now. And you know what's kind of cool too, Britton, if you didn't notice, all the tables they have out there for seating, they also have old school board games. Oh, so if you cool. want to bring the family in, play little uh, you know, shoots and ladders, Monopoly, whatever, they have those board games awesome. and, a, and a huge chess board up there. Yeah, so, it's a super cool place. Yeah, great for a family night. So uh, 610 uh, Clayton Street, please come check them out. They support us, so please support them. We really appreciate it. So, all right. After now we've got our horn done. Uh, we got uh, we're going to Naked Hotel, both of us. All right, are uh, we ready? Dun da da da. Secret oh, Bronco. No, fan. we're both wrong. I did go sit in the owner's box. I did not wear a Bronco shirt underneath. I have no balls to rip it open. <laughs> <laughs> I would never. 
fight your way out, right? <laughs> yeah, no, it would have been. Love well, it. first of all, they may have escorted me out. It would have been pretty. So right, you right. remain. I might as well be a streaker. Right. Well, I, I couldn't when you yeah. were talking about. Well, it, I that's because it was all real. Like of... I was actually in that owner's box, yeah. and it was really prime rib and kettle one vibe. I mean, I have all right. of it. Wow. But I would never. When right. you were never. talking about it, I couldn't help but think of that. Uh, Seinfeld, where David like, Putty keeps painting his face or yeah. painting, painting his chest. Yeah. yeah, just. Well, also, it's all fresh in our minds because Kelsey, uh, the Kelsey brother, is such a I close taker offer. I hate it. Oh, so right. Uh, you know, it's funny. Well, I, I worked for Pepsi for years. Any Pepsi function, if you have a Coca Cola product or anything, even mm-hmm. you didn't know of Coca Cola, dude, they lose their shit. They lose their minds. Yeah. So I, I can imagine the NFL's 10 times worse. Right. You know, that's because that but, probably is a huge. You I did fight. help Hart Clark Hunt, and he did invite me to the owner's box to watch a Broncos game, and it was the Tebow one, and they were legitimately Amazing. at the end, no shit. Thanks for coming. And uh, Before, yeah. it was like, we're going to take you everywhere. You're going to meet John Elway. Yeah. We're like, this is going to be amazing. Bye. See you guys. <laughs> that is great. What a bunch of So all of that was true stories. except for the Bronco shirt. All right. So um, that means uh, Naked Hotel is true. Naked Hotel is true. And it was after getting pudding. I, I, we were doing a limit date. There was pudding wrestling. I should have told this as part of the story. What? Uh, we were doing pudding wrestling. I wasn't obviously doing it. I'm producing it. Um, and one of the girls would not get into pudding unless I did. And I said, I can't get into the pudding. But if you do the pudding wrestling, you can dunk my head into the pudding. Um, afterwards, and they were all cleaned up by the time we got done with interviews. So she got to take two cans of giant cans of pudding and dump it over my head. So I got home after just getting hammered with my hair, literally standing straight up in pudding, fucking. <laughs> and then uh, took a shower, which is why I was naked. Took a shower, laid down, up, down, yeah, up, yeah. down, up. Oh my goodness! What the fuck? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what the fuck? I love how you guys just cup in the front and don't cup your butt crack. You can see my ass. We, my ass is fantastic. Yeah, we'd yeah. rather see the junk. It's, it's, oh, I get yeah. that, but you know what I'm saying? It's it's a, it's a grower, not like a shower. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't need to see that yet. Yeah. Plus, uh, the, and the erection was immediately and gone when the door shut. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'd be full on like so I'd be ripping up carpet. When I was throwing up out of that hallway. Yeah. When I was throwing myself. up from being too drunk, I had an erection. But when I got out of the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, the junker gets the uh, the popo calls real fast. Yeah. So yeah. Like, I, it, I sent a couple stories I was going to tell games. to my dad, and he was like, "Don't do those; those are too dirty." And then I'm just yeah, no, like, like I couldn't have told a dirty story. Yeah. Brent, the, the 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 bar for dirty on this podcast is I know, but yeah. I think my parents were hoping I wouldn't be one of those that joined the upper echelon. So I hopefully, I've have, saved it. I still have my mother ask me like, "Why would you say that?" And to this day, I still go, "Hi, mom. I'm Jenny. Have we met?" Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I'm trying to think of yeah. the story. I was like, I could tell this one. My dad's like, I wouldn't do. That. I was like, all right, not that one. Um. Yeah, my mom comments on the language all the time. Right. You know what I mean? I'm like, I'm trying, mom. I'm doing my best. You raised a horrible human being. What do you want me to tell you? You know. But uh, <laughs> uh, so also, that means fatal attraction is actually a true story as well. It's a true story, and she was amazing. Wow. Uh, I've got tons more Glenn Close stories because she came and shot with us for two days at the actual build too. It was for a family that um, that a PTSD family, and she deals. She has a big charity called a Bring Change to Mind. Yeah. Which is all about mental health issues nice. and so this guy had PTSD to the point where he couldn't live in the house of his family he was living in a special facility and we built him a house that he could come home to right and she came and helped us yeah well and the fact that you could approach somebody like I mean I hate to say that there's a social system in Hollywood but she's one of the top Oh, she yeah. she was Upper, nominated for upper deckers of in, the Hollywood stardom of and the 80s to not be able to have that fangirl right ah, you know, of the '80s, she was nominated eight of ten years for Oscars. Wow, that's nuts. Yeah, it was, it's she's insane. Yeah. So uh, she comes to set, and we're on Extreme Makeover, and she uh, she says, "I'm having a lot of trouble being myself, Brenton." And I was like, "Well, then don't be yourself. Be one of your characters. Be your character from the natural." She was hot, yeah. and she goes, "Well, I thought you were gay." And I was like, "Yeah, I didn't stop women till like Dangerous Liaisons." <laughs> and she goes, "Oh, I thought it would have been Fatal Attraction. That's when I stopped fucking women." She goes, oh, "So it's all my fault." That's like, pretty I much, man. Pretty much, all your fault. That's when I stopped fucking women. <laughs> oh, I That's love amazing. it. She also, one of our hosts was British, um, Ed, and uh, he's almost Cockney. His accent. It was very, um, very, you know, strong, strong British, not yeah. not regular, uh, crappy British. It was strong British. <laughs> and uh, she goes, British. "Oh, you're British. I love you guys. You guys use the word cunt." And I got to tell you, like a fifty-person crew went, huh? 
Yeah. And she goes, oh, no, no, it's a wonderful word. Come on, come on. Who doesn't love a woman's cunt? And I go, ah, oh. she goes, ah, well. Yeah, they use, <laughs> it, yeah, in Britain and Australia, oh, yeah, it's, they it's use used, the word cunt like it's, well, it's also, an endearing term. This is a fag. Right, I that, know. That's a little weird to get used to when you're right. over there. What? Right. 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 Uh, but I mean, it's, <coughs> it's just where you're at, right? Because this word, right. that, that's a fighting word here. Oh, it's awful word. But yeah. in, in England, yeah. I mean, literally, they use it like we use the F word. Yeah. Right? And, well, yeah. And like we use the word honey or. Right. Love or whatever, you know. Also, there's some... I forget it, so I won't even say it. I forget what it is. There's some word that means... Fanny. A fanny pack was invented in Britain. A fanny yeah. pack, it, it exists here because that is a woman's fanny. Okay. In England, whereas over here, that's a fanny. That's our right. fanny. A fanny pack is a woman's... Uh, vagina. I had no idea. Because in America, we are kind of prudes at times. Is, very, is it, you know, very compared to Europe. Yeah, One of yeah. the most prudent. I but mean, we also get away Europe. with more extreme things sometimes than they do. But right. it's a weird mix. Right, it's a weird mix. Yeah, but the language makes me laugh. You know, it's yeah. uh, my mom's cousin had married a woman from uh, Britain, and they say, "Come knock you up." That's how. Oh, at ten o'clock, I'll come, come pick you up. Is come knock you up, and when she said, everybody just kind of said, "What?" What the fuck you just say? Like, you know? I really didn't want yeah. a baby yeah. in 10 yeah. months, but yeah. thanks. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Or Australia. Good on you, mate. Good on you. Good on you. Yeah. Good on you, mate. That's yeah, that's awesome. a that's a money shot all day long in I my know. head. I went, down to, uh, <laughs> I went down to Australia, and I was so alarmed that nobody spoke like Crocodile Dundee because he speaks like people <laughs> that live in the ranch land in the outback. Right. Uh, like 90% of Australia's population exists within 10 miles of the coast. Right. When you live in the middle there... Yeah, so my buddy Gavin, who's Australian but doesn't say, Good eye, mate. Yeah. Uh, his father in law, who's a rancher, came to visit in LA and he's like, Good eye, mate. And I'm like, Oh, I finally actually heard that yeah. phrase out of somebody's yeah. mouth. Yeah. Not just crocodile <laughs> yeah. on yeah. It's amazing. You're like, and it wasn't shrimp on the Barbie. Yeah, there's no uh, shrimp I'm not going to use the accent because the only well, one oh, I have mate, is Colorado. Oh, boy. Well, I went to New Orleans and I was pretty excited to beat somebody that sounded like Boomhauer. They exist. Oh, yeah. Come on down. You don't want well, to go down and get on Somebody you just absolutely cannot Mexico. understand it. I sat there and stared at the conversation like I. I just. I just you got to catch everything, uh, about every fifth word. Yeah. So yeah. Like, and I'm hopefully I can string it together. Go down to the basement and I'll pizza restaurant, man. I caught like, pizza. Well, you, you go podcast, basement. Mm-hmm. Pizza restaurant, coffee. <laughs> <laughs> Put your little investigator hat on. Uh, before you go, I do want to ask you a question or two. Yep. Um, this is going to be kind of a tough one because you probably don't have an answer. But uh, what what are you most proud of in your career so far? In my career alone. Yeah. Well, you're an Emmy winner. Yeah, yeah and that, I mean that's a, that's a proud moment. If you met a stranger on the street, Brenton, what would you direct them to watch that you produced? There you go. Ooh, I mean it would. Pff- Probably be extreme makeover. Yeah. But I also that I had less to do with that. You know, like I was a I was a cog. I was the senior producer, but there were about eighteen people above me making decisions. I was just a guy that made shit happen. I was right. early. Um, Tiny House Nation was really a lot me. Um, but also Elbow Room, which I won the Emmy for. It's not that I, I. That show was a show that that hadn't really found its feet when I got there. And they kind of brought me in to, to help kind of finish up season one. And there was a lot of feeling that there wasn't going to be a season two. Mm-hmm. And they just kind of had to get through this, get some good episodes, you know, get the TV shows to, to HGTV. And they liked it so much that they ordered a season two. Um, and I think I had a heavy influence on that. I don't you want to bet. take credit for it, but I think I had a heavy influence on that. They ordered season two and season two won an Emmy. Um, so it's like, that's, that's very, I'm very proud about it. Not because of the Emmy. I'm proud of it because I feel like I went there to a show that really needed me and added what I could to make it very successful. And I, I right. so seldom, it's such a group effort. And sometimes you come into shows that have been going for five years and you're just coming in to take over. To, to know that I had such a good hand in, in helping that show become what it was, was, was very proud. The right. magical juge is needed. I, I yeah. Can't, I was the gay that came in and juge. The, g- the gay <laughs> juge. Yeah. yeah, so I think that's probably what I'm most proud of. Not necessarily that it won an Emmy, but that that, that show was um, as successful as it was. That's very cool. nice. Yeah, very nice. Very cool. Do you think it's on its last leg or it's dying? The like the reality. The, yeah. Well, reality will die last. Okay. Because it's the hardest thing for AI to fake. AI right. can't fake. Right. A rea- I mean, I'm sure it can, but I don't yeah. know if it's realistic, right? Right. Uh, it can fake a performance you've written. Uh, so I think that'll be the last. Also, if you know it's AI, you, do you really, yeah, do you really want to watch the reality right, show? Right. Yeah, that's a logical so thought process. So I feel like it'll go last, but it, it's all coming, and it's not 
it's we're not long for life. Right. Uh, the the industry is changing rapidly right now. I know people that are staff writers on TV shows. Right. I mean, you know, that's not even the bastard stepchild of reality. That's scripted writers right. who are driving Ubers. Right. I can't imagine. You know, I know people that have lost their houses and lost their apartments and all that kind of stuff. And I, I you know, it actually benefited me because I got to come home when my dad had a surgery and my mom had a, a, a stroke-like incident and had to recover. And so, like, a lot of that stuff's happened while well, I've got to be here doing this, right. which is great. Yeah, it's uh, it's changing. The world's definitely changing from when we were kids. You AI, know, drastic. AI, well, AI and are you, yeah. have, you, have you searched on Facebook in the last week? It's now an AI search. Yeah, it's now a meta search. Yeah, yeah, meta. So, like, we're already there. I hate it. I hate it. Yeah, it's crazy. Well, and it's the way of the future. I just heard my first podcast is being governed by AI, so these guys don't have to do 75% of the work. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, easy. Easy. Yeah. Even when you're making reels on this stuff now, there's all these new pro, uh, this new uh, software out there to where if you want to sit down and make four or five reels out of this, you don't have to. Right. AI will make 30 of them. Of course. And then yeah, yeah. Uh, rank them on which ones are they feel will be most likely to take off. It's nuts. Yeah. It's it's kind of it's kind of a bummer. You know? Technical tech, and we, we you know we, we were very fortunate enough to be a part of this this age where we went from none of this to all of this. Right. And we're the only we're the only generation that has got to see that. Yeah, yeah. reality TV did not exist when we were kids. Right. right. None of this existed but, when we were kids. So I think that's super that we get a taste of both of that because our yes, we call them boomers and setting their ways and all that. They're the last of it. Yeah. We're the middle of it. And this new cusp, well I just I can't even say I got faith, but Good luck to y'all. Well, yeah. it's going to be a different world they take over. Yeah. They're going to understand it a lot better than we do, which right. is why right. it all feels like like we don't get them. It's very but alien. But they might get it better than anybody else. Right. They're also the first generation. You know, we kind of got lulled in, and our parents especially, into this kind of Reagan era. Um, that's kind of how it is. Yeah, they're screwing us with taxes, but that's kind of, that's kind of how it is. And right. everything's good, so who cares? And... As much as they don't have any follow through, I really respect this next generation for going, fuck that. Yeah. You're like, yeah, no, fuck that. I mean, it is awful. We just, it's just kind of always been, no, fuck that. Oh, okay. And, but like, they don't have the follow through to do something, but I do yeah. like that they're the first generation that I've seen. It's like, mm. no. To have some We're not doing thing. that. You have some yeah. critical yeah. thinking about great, it. Yeah, you've got a great yeah. point. This is all bullshit. I wouldn't even say they're not following through with it. I think, they're, I think they are. I think they're, I, they just, uh, you, you, you nailed it. Right. They just don't. They're gonna they, do their own thing. They, 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 yeah. Well, I, they, like I think they'll give us term limits where nobody yeah. else can get us term limits in politics. I think yeah. they'll do things like that, yeah. that because it just makes sense to them. And as one voting block, they're gonna go, oh, no, no, yeah, they're already changing. So I, I hope that that's what happens. Well, I think if we all looked at ourselves at their age, we probably wouldn't respect each other. Oh no, very much either. You know, no. it's a young age. Right, right, right. They're all so young, and we we try and they're in charge of the next generation, and we're like, right. why are you not doing better? They're like, I'm. 20. Yeah. I, just I, I, I yeah. still tell my kid we would not be friends. If I was your age, we wouldn't be friends. Yeah, right. Not even. You're yeah. my son and I love you. Yeah. Not friends. Completely. Yeah. yeah. So. But anyway, man, we're running out of time here. But, uh, Brent, you've been awesome, man. I really thank yeah. you for coming down. Appreciate were, it. Yeah, you were, you were amazing, man. This was truly it's, entertaining and a lot of fun. I have 167 episodes, including you, and i got to tell you, there's probably five that I've had like this to where I got engrossed in the story and I, w- I wasn't thinking of picking it apart you know what I mean so that's that's a compliment yeah, that, yeah that's a huge compliment yeah, yeah. because well, that's that's rare and hard to come by yeah. listen I'm just glad I won <laughs> ah, there you, you know go. what? Top that's, five. That's not bumper. a big deal. That's What's not, my prize? That's, that's, pretty, that's pretty common, my friend. So, <laughs> anyway, Brent Metzler, thank you so much. Thank, thank you, guys. You, I appreciate you. it. Yeah, I'm Moose Lundstrom. I'm Jenny Ned. And we'll catch you next time. Peace. <laughs>